Good morning, everyone. Uh, hello, and my name is John Mahaney with the uh, Managing Safety, which is a project of the Florida Aviation Network, reporting from Long Beach, California. And my, des my guest today is uh, Mike Bush, who's the CEO of Savvy Aviation, and he's a little bit north in Arroyo Grande, California. And Mike Bush is probably, arguably, the best known A&P and IA in general aviation. He writes a monthly savvy maintenance column in AOPA Pilot. He hosts the free EAA-sponsored maintenance webinars. He's written two books about maintenance and is working on two more. That's news to me. Mike was honored as a National Aviation Maintenance Technician of the Year for 2008. He's been a pilot and aircraft owner for over 50 years with 8,000 hours logged and is a CFII. He's the CEO of Savvy Aviation and co-founder of AvWeb. So good morning, Mike. Morning, John. I, that's my fault. I, I guess I gave you a somewhat dated bio because I, I have written four books. I am not working on the two anymore. Okay, that's okay. They, they, they are, all four of them are in the can and they're available on Amazon. I actually have two of them. And you <laughs> a client of mine years ago at Flight Safety and I learned a lot from you. So uh, as you put it, I beat you up in the sim, and then you beat me up in the classroom. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, that was fun. That was I, fun. Miss, I miss that. So, uh, Mike, let's start out with just, uh, you know, the focus of this is on the General Aviation Award Program, and what can, you know, tell me about the uh, General Aviation Awards, you know, as you see it. Well, it, it's, a, it's a program that's been around for a long time, uh, more than 50 years. It was started in the mid-60s as a... Uh, uh, a, a partnership between the FAA and, and some people in industry uh, for the purpose of um, recognizing uh, excellent aviation professionals, uh, um, flight instructors, uh, uh, mechanics, uh, uh, what used to be aviation safety counselors and now our fast team representatives. Um, and, it, and for, um, for many years, the industry part of the program was um, run by a, a couple of flight instructors, uh, Joanne and Sandy Hill, and, and they managed the program for, for many years uh, in cooperation with the, with the FAA. And um, uh, then in 2014, uh, they announced their retirement because they were, uh, uh, Sandy's health was deteriorating. So uh, at that point, uh, GAA uh, turned into a uh, nonprofit corporation with a, a real board of directors and so on. And we've tried to operate it as a, you know, a more, f more formal operation. I can, we can talk about that. Later, but at any rate, the program is a cooperative effort between the uh, FAA and uh, uh, more than a dozen industry organizations. Um, and each year, there's a award selection process that starts at the district level, um, with each uh, FAA FISDO um, nominating. Uh, uh, winners in, in, in their particular district for the three different awards, uh, the, the CFI of the year, the um, Aviation Maintenance Technician of the year, and the Fast Team Rep of the year. And, and then the, uh, uh, the district uh, winners go to FAA regions uh, what actually used to be the, the, the FAA regions, except that a couple of years ago, the FAA reorganized and they got rid of their regions. So now we have regions that are based on time zones. There's five regions uh, for the awards, uh, you know, based on the five time zones in the United States. And um, so the regional winners are selected by FAA headquarters personnel. And uh, then, then there's a final round of national judging and that's done by, um, by panels of, uh, distinguished industry judges uh, that volunteer to do this. And, and so finally, we wind up with three national winners, uh, uh, national CFI of the year, national AMT of the year, 
and a national fast team rep of the year. <clears throat> and the, those three national winners uh, get all expense paid trips to uh, Oshkosh, uh, where th there's an award ceremony involving uh, the FAA and, and the various industry sponsors at, uh, at AirVenture, except of course, last year, <laughs> We didn't have an air venture, so we, we we had to do it virtually. And it would be nice if we have an air venture in 2021, but I guess the jury is still out on that. Some are saying it's on, and I'm I'm kind of thinking it's going to you know wait and see how things go. So yeah, nobody can predict that at this point. I think. Yeah, actually, I, I was a winner. Gosh, back in 05, 15 years ago, and locally, oh. mm -hmm. so, and that was my introduction to all this. So um, anyway, it was it was nice to be recognized at least one time. And then I, I learned more about, you know, how it's, you know, run in the competition and some of that. So, um, so let me ask, how is the uh, comp award competition structure? Well, as I mentioned, uh, the, the competition is done in three phases. It starts at the district and the district level and moves up to the regional level and then the, to the national level. Um, it, and it starts in early August, uh, right after Air Venture, okay. where we put out a request for nominations. So, and we, we send that out through all of the general aviation news outlets and so on. Um, and the fast team program managers in the FISDO also were recruited to, to, to try to, uh, come up with nominations at, at their, in, in their district. Um, there's a, an application procedure and some application forms that are all available on the General Aviation Awards website. And we've got a fairly comprehensive website at generalaviationawards.org. Um, and the submission deadline for uh, applications uh, is November 30th. Then during the month of December, um, the district level judging goes on at each FAA FISDO um, where they um, review the applicants located in their particular district and select um, uh, winners in these three categories at the district level. Uh, the district level winners are announced on January 1st of each year then during the first two weeks of January, the regional level judging is done at FAA headquarters. Um, and uh, as I mentioned, the, the, the we, we're now using regions based on time zones. So we have five regions, Eastern Central Mountain, Pacific and Alaska. And um, the regional winners are then announced in the middle of January, January 17th this year. And then finally, uh, the national judging takes place during the last two weeks of January. And uh, the judging is performed by three volunteer teams of distinguished industry judges, one team for each of the three award categories um, under the supervision of a, a chief judge. And of course, all of them are volunteers. Um, Former national award winners like you and me are, are allowed to serve as judges, but board members are not allowed to serve as judges. So I can't serve as a judge because I'm on the board uh, of general aviation. And, and right. the, so then the, finally, then the three national honor honorees are announced you know, on or about February 1st. Okay. And we send out a lot of publicity and then we start organizing to bring all these guys to, to Oshkosh for, to, to receive, officially receive their awards in a, in a ceremony at, uh, at AirVenture. Yeah, I've, I've attended that a couple of times. It's been very nice. And I didn't say, realize, as you pointed out, that it's, you know, the winners by, by time zones, so, you know, Eastern, Central, Western, all that. So that's new. Yeah, that, that started a couple of years ago when the FAA reorganized. You know, they used to have districts, Western Pacific and all those things. And uh, they they got rid of those districts, so we had to scramble to come up with a substitute, and we decided to uh, sure. do it on a time zone uh, basis. But we you know look at all parts of the country. Um, so who runs the awards? Well, 
you know, as I, I mentioned, for many years, uh, the program was was produced and directed, if you will, by by Joanne and Sandy Hill. Uh, and then when they retired in 2014, uh, General Aviation Awards program was transformed into a nonprofit corporation with a board of directors. All the board members are volunteers and serve without compensation. Uh, we, we presently have eight people on the board. Um, most of them are former national award winners, um, but our uh, current uh, board chair, uh, Sandhya, uh, is, uh, has a fundraising, a professional fundraising background. And our uh, treasurer, uh, Pam Shriver, is a CPA. So the two people on the board that are responsible for the money stuff are very well qualified now. Um, GAA actually got kind of in financial trouble a few years ago. We were just, we were running out of money. It was very, very tense. And at that point, uh, Sanya uh, came on board as the, as the, the board chair uh, and started doing a really excellent fundraising effort and Pam handled the accounting and we're, we're now back in a fairly healthy state uh, financially. So that, that was, that's, that's a good thing. So we got some really good people on board. We are looking to add a few more people to the board and a few, few more people to various committees. And we are encouraging uh, past honorees uh, to step up and volunteer uh, to do some of the stuff that, that needs to happen to, uh, uh, to make the program work. Uh, we obviously depend heavily on the FAA, especially the FAST team program managers in each of the FISDOs uh, to recruit and select worthy candidates for consideration for these awards. Um, but the FAA is, uh, is prohibited uh, from providing any sort of financial support. So we, we, we do not get any money from the FAA. They can't do that. Uh, they do help us a lot, particularly at the FISDO level, but um, uh, but but we have we have to find a way to come up with the money to uh, to do all of the stuff that we have to do uh, without the FAA's help. Right. Yeah. No. Just like the fast team, no funding. Yeah. Exactly. So, uh, Mike, how did you get involved? Well, um, I, I'm a past uh, honoree. I was honored as National AMT of the Year in 2008. When um, so I, I was. Uh, uh, prime for the picking, <laughs> so to speak. Uh, and when Joanne and Sandy retired in 2014, um, uh, uh, former CFI of the year, Arlen McMahon, kind of stepped up to the plate, uh, grabbed the reins, uh, uh, formed a snort non -corp profit corporation, started recruiting board members for this new nonprofit. Uh, one of her first recruits was a dear friend of mine, a friend and colleague of mine, Paul New, uh, who was National AMT of the Year for 2007, the year before I, I got the award. And he joined the, the board. He was one of the original board members in 2014, uh, and he joined as, uh, served as treasurer. Uh, and then Paul reached out and recruited me to the board. So, um, so I was kind of one of the original board members as well. Uh, poor Paul is still on the board. Uh, nowadays, he serves as the air venture coordinator who handles all the logistics of getting the honorees to Oshkosh and finding them lodging and, and uh, whining and dying them and stuff. Uh, and as I mentioned, the treasurer role is now in the hands of Pam Shriver, who's a, who's a, a CPA. Um, but that's how that's that's kind of how I got got recruited to the board, and I've, I've served on the board since 2014, since the original formation of the of the nonprofit. Okay, so and uh, your role now, or um... well, I, I was recruited um, because I'm a computer nerd, and they needed somebody who knew how to how to send out emails and put up websites and stuff like that. So. My my formal title is is uh, director of uh, public relations and communications for GAA. I send out the press releases that solicit 
nominations and announce the regional and national winners and so forth. And I also originally designed and implemented the GAA website um, at generalaviationawards.org, although we, we do now have a professional website person who maintains the site and keeps it up to date. But that, that's basically my job is doing the computer stuff. Sure. You're the IT guy. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. So can you tell us a bit about why, you know, well, you mentioned some of it about, you know, just the fundraising, of, you know, reasons behind the, what all goes into it. You, you mentioned some of it so we can just, you know. Yeah. Well, uh, of course, Sandhya is the expert on that. Uh, but uh, basically, the... Uh, the reason that GAA needs funding is the, well, a lion's share of our budget every year goes towards expenses involved in getting the national award winners to air venture at Oshkosh um, do, and setting up the awards presentation and the awards luncheon and all of that stuff. It, you know, we have to pay for travel and hotel accommodations and dinners and a big catered luncheon and expenses like that. Um, other expenses, we we uh, we have to get plaques made for each of the honorees for them to take home, and also uh, plaques that go up on a permanent uh, display in the EAA museum that where all of the GA award winners our names are are, are put up on a on a, on a big uh, plaque board there in the museum lobby. <clears throat> we have expenses um, involved. Uh, in hosting and maintaining the uh, the website, uh, we have to pay an accountant to prepare the tax returns and some other minor operating costs. And as I mentioned, now the our board chair is Sanya um, Narayan Swami. Uh, it's a long <laughs> uh, Indian name that I always butcher, but uh, Sanya is a professional. Uh, fundraising background as well as a GA nut yes. and um, so she's really helped um, bring the fundraising back to where it needs to be and uh, our treasurer Pam Schreiber is a, is a CPA who's doing a really good job of uh, providing uh, accounting and and uh, keeping our finances in good shape so we've got a very accomplished team dealing with the money stuff uh, we are trying to get more corporate sponsorships. We, we have quite a few, but we're, we're looking for other uh, companies in the, in the GA space to step up to the plate and provide support to the program. We also uh, solicit individual gifts. Um, there's uh, the GAA even has a GoFundMe site for, for people who want to donate anonymously or whatever. And um, we also uh, welcome in-kind gifts uh, f that we can uh, give, give to the honorees uh, every year at the award ceremony. Like, for example, Rod Machado always donates a whole bunch of his books and stuff that we give to the uh, honorees, so. It seems like every time I've attended the luncheon ceremony, there's you know, donations there from Rod and everyone else, as you've mentioned. So, um, you know, which is uh, you know, good for them. And so it, it's a win-win for both of them. So um, and helps promote everyone in the process. Um, I guess following up on that, you know, how can I find out more about this? Well, the, the, the best way to find out about it is to go to the website at generalaviationawards.org. There's a wealth of information about the program, uh, uh, stuff about the, the the nomination procedures, forms for uh, application forms uh, uh, that you fill out online and submit, and they go to the they go to your local FISDO for for judging and so on. Um, we we send out press releases throughout the year for for various events in, in both soliciting nominations and also announcing award winners and 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 uh, inviting people to the award ceremony at Oshkosh and we send those out to a pretty significant list of 
general aviation press outlets, AVWeb, Aero News Network, AOPA, EAA, that sort of thing. Um, FAN, I'm sure. <laughs> and um, uh, if anybody would like to be added to our email list and get the press releases directly, um, just let us know. If you go to the website, there's contact contact us information on the website and you can uh, request to be added to the uh, to the distribution list for our for, for our press releases I, I think i've generally seen it through the various industry newsletters you know aopa ea and all that stuff so, uh, but anyway um that's all good is there anything else you'd like to uh tell us or um anything else um to add or well just just that this is you know, in, in my perspective, it's a very, very worthwhile program. And uh, it, it, you know, it's, it's an all volunteer program. So we are looking for um, more people to help us out. And we are looking for, uh, for more funding um, because we, you know, we, we, we have these quite, quite a few expenses to do this throughout the year. Um, and, uh, the what anything that's donated to to general aviation awards is 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 in 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 good stewardship we've got a you know a professional team uh, making sure that the money is handled uh, well so anybody who's interested in either volunteering to help us particularly if you're a previous award winner we we, we like to recruit previous award winners to the the board and the and to run the committees, um, or if if you um, would like to become a corporate sponsor, we would very much welcome that. Of course, but well, listening to you speak, I'm thinking maybe being a past award winner, even though it's years ago, um, there might be something I could do. Um, I'll I'm sure there is. <laughs> be careful what you volunteer for. I wear several hats, but uh, anyway. We were, I mean, I, I feel very strongly about the program because it recognizes, um, you know, excellence in education, you know, the flight instructor and maintenance community, and the three, you know, it recognizes those that do the best, which is always important um, and encourages other people to, you know, um, improve their game to, you know, uh, to make it up into the ranks and uh, you know, be recognized. So that's a good thing. So, um, in fact, I think AOPA has got their own flight instructor recognition. So I, I think it's spawned some of these others as well, but um, I know I appreciated it. I didn't even know about this until the past team program manager said, John, you should fill this out. I said, what is it? Oh, and unbeknownst to me and uh, you know, gosh, didn't know about it. So um, very nice to be recognizing, you know, for, and for what you do and, um, and you can take that and, you know, run with it and help, help to improve your own business as well. So, um, yeah, I was sort of in the same boat. I was re recruited by m my fast team program manager, and he, I, I said, "Are you sure you got the right person?" <laughs> but uh, I figured I threw my hat in the ring. I figured I, you know, I would have absolutely no chance because I, I became a AMT very late in life. I was almost sixty years old when when I when when I got my A and P certificates and. Uh, but uh, somehow or other, I wound up uh, be being the national winner in 2008. Yeah, I actually ended up in competition with somebody at another flight school, which I didn't know at the time. And then afterwards, I learned that myself and them were, were competing, and they decided I should be. And I was like, me? Really? Are you sure? But <laughs> it's like, that's going to work out. So I went from kind of doing my own thing, but nice to be recognized. And uh, I kind of yeah. it, everything that goes with it. So uh, it's been a good thing. So I do appreciate that. So, yeah. you know, anyway, and I appreciate what they're doing. I'll have to reach out and see, you know, if there's some way, um, see what's, what's, what's available. So, um, anyhow, appreciate your uh, time this morning, Mike, and uh, good to learn more about it. And I'll yeah, I, I guarantee you that we can put you to work. <laughs> <laughs> Be careful what I volunteer for, but uh, <laughs> I'm involved with some other things. It's all fun, just a matter of time and all that sort of thing. So, uh, anyhow... Appreciate your time this morning and, and doing this, and uh, nice to connect with you again. I've met you at a few industry events, but it's nice to connect with you again. And uh, so uh, we'll uh, maybe be in touch uh, offline at some point here. So uh, 
Thank you for your time. And um, John Mahaney for the uh, Ford Aviation Network Managing Safety. Um, thank you very much. And uh, that's it. So. Thank you, John.